Nursing is almost, it's a bit like an amoeba. It's almost quite a slippery thing. It's got boundaries, but they shift all the time. They're constantly shifting and changing and nurses are moving across boundaries so that somehow they're not boundaries anymore. In hospitals, it's heavy swing doors. You push and it goes back with a whoosh. Then it comes back on itself, quite slowly. The door goes open with a whoosh and your baggage is left at home and you're this different person and you go in through the whoosh to the panic, to the sickness, to the death, to the pain. And what you're hoping for at the end of the shift is that slow closure of the door. It doesn't go with a whoosh. It goes ever so gently. It goes ever so slowly. It goes, everything's all right now. And you leave and you're going home and you might not be all right, but because your shift's finished, you can now be a mother, a daughter, a sister, a partner. You're in a different world. I mean, that world might not be safe or happy, but it's your world. And you're going back to it. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be. When it's working really well, it's like spinning plates. You're keeping all the plates going. It's a beautiful rhythm. Even to the point where making a bed becomes a dance. The person is on the opposite side of you, a mirror image. You go to one end, you lift the sheets, you put the blanket over, you fold it up, shake it, no words exchanged. They move to the bottom of the bed at exactly the same time. We're doing things in complete unison. It is a beautiful thing. It really is when you're working with a team like that. There may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight and music and love and romance, let's face the music and dance. Shapeshifter, a nurse, a dancer, searching for answers. Nursing's like taking a mask off, putting a mask on, taking a mask off. Mask on, mask off, mask on, mask off. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> I did a placement in a nursing home. One of the nurses says, I may look on the outside like this is all very natural and normal to me, but it's all going on in here. Points to head. I'm thinking very hard about everything I'm having to do. The care is constantly thinking. I wouldn't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but from the outside it can look easy. Putting pills in a pot or whatever. But you know, really carefully checking which pills you're giving people. All of those like careful checking processes, it's obviously vital. There's a lot going on. The care is everywhere. Moving and handling patients. Shapeshifter, a nurse, a weightlifter. I meet some doctors, they were starting around and I could see through the glass door of one of the side rooms. An elderly gentleman who was very breathless and coughing and the doctor says, I need more than a surgical mask, I'm really close up and they're coughing. I say, I, I don't have any, I've only got surgical masks. He says, have you got any visors? I say, no, there's none in stock, I ain't got any, I'm really sorry. I'm thinking, these doctors have got to go in and put themselves in a very difficult situation to help these people who are very sick and will probably kind of die. And the chances are they're gonna get sick as well because of what they're trying to do, you know? Bearing in mind they were higher risk because of their ethnicity. I remember giving ITU something they wanted that nobody else wanted, they owe me a favor. I go back to intensive care, can I have half a dozen of them and half a dozen of the other? Bish bash bosh, Bob's your uncle. I take down visors to the doctors in the other ward. I solve that problem for probably five minutes, but at least I've solved the problem for five minutes. Shapeshifter, a nurse, wheeler dealer, Dale Boy versus Grim Reaper. I hate speaking for everybody, you know, but from my perspective, I felt that we were all working towards a common goal of moving forward together, like an army of ants, you know? Busy, busy, busy. But now I'm not sure it's like that anymore. 
I just feel as if the marching ants are just going to fall away somehow, break rank through, perhaps through illness, perhaps through death, perhaps through retirement, perhaps through inability to cope, giving in their resignation. You know, I just feel very disconcerted at the moment about nursing and how it's going to move forward after what the government has said is going to happen. We don't have time to go to our own union meetings because we're too busy working. We give every last penny to our patients and then go home and collapse in a heap. That's what makes those voices not heard. It's not just nurses, but parents, mothers, caregivers, young carers, those marginalised groups. They're just surviving, so they don't have time to. I was going across the back of the morgue. It was like a building site. There were three, four men, construction going up of some sort, and because of the way I am, I was asking questions. What are you doing? And because I was in uniform, they were honest, and they said, we're actually extending the mortuary refrigeration capacity. And at that point, the pandemic really hit me. You know, because they're actually saying, well, we're going to have so many dead bodies, we can't put them in our fridges. We've got to have somewhere else to put them. Sometimes you wish you weren't so inquiring. I went to a children's party about a week ago and the children got a bubble machine. I thought, wouldn't it be nice if the patient was in that nice bubble? It's like got a protective, almost invisible outer bit to it, and inside it's all colourful and rainbow-like. Do you know what I mean? It changes shape according to wind or whatever. I put the patient in a bubble, so the care is the outside of the bubble, and then the care going in is the different colours that you see in the bubble. I'm forever blowing bubbles. So I have a bunch of friends who are friends from university for nursing. And I said to them recently, if you knew then what you know now, would you have done it? And quickly they all said no. And I said, but knowing what you do now, would you stop? And they said, no way. And I think for me, that's really key. The more you learn, the more you can't leave. I had been trying to get out of nursing for quite some time anyway. The pandemic had just pulled me back, back into nursing. I just cannot get out of it, and that's how I feel. I stand outside the back door. You have to strip off your uniform at work, then you have to bring your uniform home, but then the clothes I, like my normal clothes I'm in, I strip all those off at the back door, shoes off, stuff straight into the washing machine. Nobody talked to me or touched me until I get completely showered down. There's no nurse signal in the sky. We don't get changed in the phone box. I'm a nurse, not a superhero. We turn up to work, pay us what we're worth. Maybe it's a calling, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's innate. Maybe it's trained, maybe it's changed. Maybe it's the same. But I think the core of nursing is or should be care, care, whatever it means to care for the patient. But then as soon as you say that, that starts to break down because what is the caring practice? It's all a caring practice. Moving, handling, lifting a patient, feeding a patient, washing a patient, helping a patient to the toilet or bringing a bedpan, it's all caring, it's fundamental care skills. But giving them the right drug instead of the wrong drug is caring. Prescribing the right drug for them is caring as well. Giving that emotional support in the right way is caring. So what is at the centre of all that? It's massively challenging, a completely newly emerging disease. And the only other very obvious example of that would have been the Spanish flu in 1918 1919, where nurses had to adapt really rapidly. All clinicians were working in a much more kind of merged way, doctors and nurses doing very much the same work overlapping, having to adapt incredibly rapidly. The medical scientists have been doing a fantastic job actually, working fast to produce new therapies and test new therapies. One of the first things they discovered was that you can pronate patients, 
turn them on their fronts and they'll breathe better. Four clinicians together rolling a patient and turning them and pronating them onto their front. Nobody's really listening to us. They hear us, the government hears us, but they don't care. Us making a noise just by ourselves isn't gonna cut it. We need everybody to fight for it because once it's gone, it's gone. We'll all know about it because we'll be paying for x-rays, we'll be paying for bloods, 30 quid a pop. You'll be paying for everything and it will be a disaster. And there'll be so many people who will slip through the net. The NHS is such an important thing, it's free at the point of delivery. It's so unbelievably important that it's a free service for people and that's slowly starting to become eroded. What we need from you, from the general public, is to fight for it. We need everybody to fight for it. A last resort or an extra measure? The body needs help to heal itself. How do you pronate hope? <laughs>